Hello and uh, welcome to this talk tonight about graph databases with PHP. We're going to be looking at Neo4j and NeoOxygen. But uh, before we get too far, let's just take a look at databases up until this point. So our traditional relational database, we have a uh, table structure, rows, columns. We put our items in an individual row and uh, the items, the, the properties of that item, are defined by the columns. If we want to join that data, like in this example, we have the names, Albert, Bernard, Charlotte, and they're joined onto cities. Now we're, we're doing that in one table here, but really we should be normalizing our database and creating city entities in separate tables and joining those through through inner joins, outer joins. And as we join more and more data, the, the nature of the joins becomes more complicated. So rather than simply having a foreign and key relationship, we end up needing intermediary tables. And again, the more and more entities we have and the more and more properties that a, a single row might have, the more join tables we end up running into. And the process of normalization can actually be to our detriment and we end up having to create far too many tables and far too many join relationships. So graph databases, um, what are they? The, the very first time I heard the term, I, I went to a talk at a PHP conference and there was a speaker talking about graph data and foolishly I thought he was going to tell us all about how you can use PHP to plot lovely pretty charts but no that's not what we mean when we talk about graphing with uh, PHP. So what does graph data look like? What, what are the common types of graph databases that we might actually be familiar with already? Well there is one that as developers we've probably all interacted with that's the Facebook Open Graph. It's quite possibly the biggest one that I've ever, ever seen and, and probably most of us here have ever seen. Similarly, the Twitter Firehose can be plotted as a graph database really effectively. Very, very commonly used for big data and I know it's a big buzzword. Um, it's, it's one that gets thrown around by the media all too freely. But realistically, when we're talking about big data, what we're talking about is, is highly unstructured data. Data where it's, it's difficult to define the relationships or not all the relationships between similar entities are actually the same. And this is where graph database comes in really, really useful. Now you'll see from the first two examples that what it's really good for is social media. And that's because social media is all about the very nature of what graph data is built on top of. And that is items or nodes and relationships. So let's just start with a single node. Here we have Batman. Batman is a person. It's a single node entity. He might be a person, he might not. Maybe maybe Batman's a superhero. But of course he's got other properties, other things that we need to define on him. Obviously the person has the name of Batman. He has a real name, Bruce Wayne. He has a superpower money and lots and lots and lots of other properties that we could go in to define. If we had lots more nodes. Here we only have five nodes, but they're all just sort of floating around there. There's no relationships defined between them. What we've got to do is to define how each of these nodes are related together. We do that just through using arrows. Those arrows indicate the direction of the relationship and also the nature of the relationship. If we zoom out a bit further from our single node, we can start to see more nodes joined. And the joins aren't just to one node, they can be joined to multiple nodes. And those joins, as you start to visualize it, will crisscross and become really quite complicated to look at and visualize. But here now, if we, we look, we have uh, two nodes, Batman and Spider-Man, and we're storing relatively different information on them. This is one of the, the great strengths with the uh, graph databases. Whereas with the traditional database, you have your rows and columns, and the column headers define the data that that row has to store. Well, not necessarily has to, but can store. So it, it, the, 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 header, the column headers pretty much say, you can have this or you can leave it empty. But with the graph database, you can, you can pretty much add and, and leave out as many or, or as few labels as you want gives you a lot more flexibility. The relationships between the, the two nodes as well then, um, as we saw, 
can actually describe the nature of the relationship. So uh, you've got friend off. Robin is a friend of Batman, but not just a friend. We all we, we can further define that as sidekick. So Neo for J. Neo for J is probably the most popular and commonly used graph database out there. Um, it's one that's really quite easy to get up and run with with PHP. So how do we do that? Very very simple. Just pop on over to neo4j.com/download and download the community edition. Now, if, like me, you're working with a Mac, what you're going to find whenever you try to spin it up is that it won't actually work. Uh, the Mac comes pre-installed with a, a version of the Java SDK that's not quite high enough, so you're going to need to upgrade that. And that's very, very simple, actually. You just pop on over to Oracle. You're not going to Java.com. You're not getting the Java runtime environment. You need the SDK. Just pop on over there and download it. It's uh, actually quite a big download, 200 odd megabytes, but it does download very, very fast. Download that. Then you need to upgrade your path. Basically, just tell your machine where that version of Java is that you've downloaded and tell it to use that new version. So in this example, you see I've used uh, version 1.8. Uh, you just replaced a bit in your code, depending on whether you downloaded 1.7 or 1.8. 1.8 is the latest at this point in time. Then all you got to do is start the Neo4j database. Wherever you downloaded that Neo4j database code, you just pop in that folder. Inside the bin folder, just run Neo4j space start, and that will spin up the Neo4j database server for you. Very, very simple. It's, a, it's, it's one of the quickest installs and starts that I've ever encountered. As soon as you do that, Neo4j comes with this really, really nice uh, local web browser interface. You just pop into localhost 7474 and you get this this browser interface. It's great and you should spend a bit of time getting familiar with it and having a play about there. A couple of little features that you might want to take a look at in the configuration files and again that's inside the Neo4j folder where you just downloaded everything. Go into the conf folder and there's a few properties you can tweak inside the server properties file. Like I say, that, that default web server is on port 7474. You can if you want to change that, but you might as well keep it there on the default ones. Quite easy to remember. But that, that The database itself, it only actually listens on localhost out of the box. If you want to change that, if, if you're using uh, a web application on one server and your Neo4j database on a different server, then you're going to have to specify the IP address that it's allowed to listen to. You can override that by setting it all to 0000, and that means it will listen to any incoming connection. Obviously, you probably wouldn't do that in a production environment, but it can be handy for development purposes. Maybe you're working with different Vagrant machines, or you run the Neo4j server on your actual local machine. It can be handy just to switch that off. As well as that authorization, the very first time you spin up the localhost server, it will ask you to define a username password. By default, the, the original one is just Neo4j and Neo4j, but it will ask you to change that after the first time. Again, for development purposes, you might want to switch that off just to make it quicker and easier, and you can do that uh, by setting the security auth enabled equal to false. But make sure you don't ever do that in production. And in fact, even for development purposes, you're probably going to want to keep that set so that you're at least defining your login authentication in your PHP code. So, question time. How do we actually run a query against the Neo4j database? Neo4j comes with its own query language. Obviously, we're not working with SQL or MySQL. Uh, the query language for Neo4j is called Cypher. Very, very similar sort of structure, and it, it, it's actually not too bad getting your head around it. So a couple of fairly basic ones to get us started. We want to create a node, create a bit like creating a row. We just use the create function. Uh, so you can create object name and colon object type. For example, you might create Bruce, and Bruce is of a type person. Let's uh, start adding some extra properties to that then. So 
Now we, we use the curly bracket notation to define a list of extra properties. So we, we're not actually uh, constrained to one property name, property value as shown in the example here. You can actually comma separate that big list all within the curly brackets. So Bruce is a person, his real name, Bruce Wayne, comma, alter ego, Batman, and we could put a load of different properties in there if we wanted. Right, so we've got our nodes. How do we define a relationship between the nodes? We're still creating, we're creating a relationship. But you create the relationship and you show them using the dashes and square bracket notation. So create the relationship between object one and object two, and then we define our relationship type, the rel type, and the convention is to do that with uppercase and using underscores instead of spaces. So we might create Joker. Uh, he likes to dance, and we can add some extra metadata to that. So he likes to dance in the pale moonlight with the devil. So match. When we want to actually query, to, to, uh, kind of like doing a select statement on an SQL, we use match, and that allows us to find entities or relationships somewhere within the graph. Uh, match is used to find nodes, so we could do match object one, and then we use return to actually return that result. If we want to find everything, we just do match n return n. So we're we're basically saying I'm just match match anything. We're going to call whatever you find n and just send everything back to me. If we want to find some certain criteria match object one, whatever that label is, and then describe the criteria that we're going to search for. So perhaps it's match Bruce, who is a person, but only find one whose real name is Bruce Wayne and send that back to us. Okay, so that's, that's the basic uh, queries via Cypher. But how are we actually going to do this in PHP? And enter in the oxygen. The Oxygen is this awesome PHP library, and it's very, very simple to install. You just use Composer, uh, Composer require the Oxygen slash Neo client, and to create our our actual the Oxygen client, the thing that's going to connect to our Neo for J database, uh, it's quite easily. You only need a couple of parameters here. Um, you can actually name your um, your connection so. We're naming it default here, and then you're just going to tell it where your database lives, and this is where specifying that IP address might have been important earlier on. So we're still going to just connect on localhost, and we're just going to connect on port seventy four seventy four. Set auto format response true uh, just makes it easier to get some of the functions available within Neo or NeoOxygen, um, and it, it it formats the response objects. Coming back to you and gives you uh, access to a couple of different functions that are used to format that and get different aspects of the result set back later on. So the very simple thing that you need to do in PHP is take whatever query you write, and you can just write that as a, a long string, but you need to send that query to the database and get the result set back. So we take the client that we built in the, the previous slide, and we just run the function send cipher query and pass our query in as a parameter. And that's it, very, very simple. You want to assign the result set of that to another variable that you can work with later on. So let's say we want to get everything, you would do your query equals match n return n. You send that to the uh, Neo4j database and you use get result to get that result. You might do a dollar result equals client send cipher query get result. Alternatively, you can uh, do get rows, which gives you a slightly different result setback. It's uh, an array that's easier to work with. Or you can get use get response. Now you don't you don't chain get response on the back of uh, client arrow send cipher query. You run get response on the client itself rather than on the result set of the query.
and I get response is kind of like getting the raw response so you get a lot of information that's uh, quite chunky and a bit more time consuming to parse but there are occasions when you might want to do that so get getting nodes is, is basically like getting a list of objects or getting a list of rows from a traditional database and that's probably one of the most common things you might want to do and also quite commonly you're going to want to limit that query you don't necessarily want everything especially if your graph database is absolutely massive and contains millions of rows you want to find what it is you're looking for using maybe some criteria and just restrict that result set so we're in this instance we're just going to match p colon person so we're looking for people any person we're just going to assign them to p return p and limit 10 so that's basically going to give us the first 10 people that it matches within our graph so we send that cipher query and we get the result back so you can see here we've just assigned that to a variable array of nodes and then we can loop through that array of nodes and we've got a, a another function called get properties that we can run on the node object that was returned by any oxygen and that'll just give us a list of all the properties on each node you can if you want just run get single property and pass into that function the name of the property that you're looking for perhaps it was name or age or something like that not only the nodes then we might actually want to find out what the relationships are on that node again here you can see we're going to match a person uh, this time we're going to ask it to bring back a person of type superhero we get that list of nodes assign it to the array heroes and as we look through that array of heroes for each individual hero we want to find the his enemies so we do get relationships and we define the relationship that we're looking for as enemy off so for that hero we have asked it to find any relationship that isn't an enemy off and that will give us a list of the enemy nodes that's a very useful way of, of crawling through your graph we can use a uh, parameter notation now obviously we, we don't want to build up our query with string concatenation so we pass parameters in and we use a curly bracket syntax to define our, our placeholders and our, our parameters and then we're out when we're actually sending our cipher query instead of just sending a, a raw query on its own we also pass through a second parameter which is an array of those placeholder parameters and the values that we want to pass into those and that way we're, we're taking care of our, our string concatenation our uh, escaping of characters and what have you here's a very useful little uh, query that you might want to run when you're playing about match n optional match n relationship r to nothing delete node comma relationship essentially that's just going to delete all nodes and all relationships it's kind of a quick and dirty way to truncate your database what you should be aware of though is although it deletes your nodes and although it deletes your relationships it doesn't delete your labels so where we did a create p colon person person is a label and those labels will still exist within your database a few resources then uh, that localhost 7474 play about with that that browser is fantastic there's loads of examples in there there's, there's some great little tutorials in there you can go and play about with the neo4j documentation on, on neo4j.com uh, great great sort of walkthrough there to get you up and running and there's actually a list of uh, pre-built graphs on this neo4j gist website go in there and have a look if you can imagine a, a set of example data and a set of example graph data someone's already written the queries to load that up for you uh, also find this uh, handy little cheat sheet full of the the, the cipher query language so uh, in those early days definitely worth a read and also on the neo4j website there's a couple of free ebooks available to you you've got the o'reilly graph databases and the uh, learning neo4j book so they're both freely available you will uh, have to give over your name and email address but they're freely available as, as ebook downloads <laughs>